Tan yeah. has just like made us all. <laughs> We always have to mention him in like every recording. <laughs> and then it'll be a highlight clip. <laughs> that he just so and just so Alexa can flirt some more on Instagram. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Lovecast, the boys love podcast. I'm your host Pixie and with me are my co-host Kayla and Alexa. Hey. So we are doing a mid-year check-in today, but um, Sli- slightly after mid-year, like a month after. Yeah. Mid-year. Yeah. <laughs> but, <you know. laughs> Alexa, don't be so literal. <laughs> they don't need to know. <laughs> When it comes out in August, they'll have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we could have just said, like, we filmed this, <laughs> like, a month ago. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> so, before we go into uh, that whole thing, uh, we have some um, updates for, like, could we call this tea? I mean, it's it's too bad. Uh-huh. Like, it's horrendous like i don't even want to call it tea um no so we haven't gone into it deep yet uh we will do a whole episode uh talking about this but for the people who want to know what's up kayla has a video out on her channel moon concert um where she explains everything going on um it's a it's about the king porsche art authors to put everything short, um, they there are video evidence of them talking about grooming. Um, well, we call it grooming. Um, oh God, go watch Kayla's video. She'll explain. <laughs> yeah, <they laughs> but just, they, they are grooming and things. sexually yeah. sexually harassing the Kin Porsche boys. Yeah, like and and. It, it's very obvious in the videos that that's what's happening. And they have yeah. a lot of... there. There's a power dynamic there. You can say what you want, that Mile is, like, rich and whatever. There's a pi- power dynamic. These authors are a lot higher on the chain than these actors. And obviously, the actors can't actually do anything, like, big about this. So... Yeah, but <clears throat> now uh, with all the backlash, the authors announced that they are um, donating the the some of the um, revenue for their next novel to charity. The PR move. It's such, like, yeah, <laughs> it's such a basic ass obvious PR move. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, because a lot of people are saying they will um, boycott. The novels so they have to do something but this is so obvious and so like of all the stupid things you can do honestly like i'm not talking about <laughs> charities that charities are stupid i'm just saying they are they are so obviously trying to redirect um everyone's attention and like and they haven't said sorry they they genuinely believe <laughs> no. that what they are doing is okay. Yeah, they have no remorse yeah. or regret about the situation. They're None. just trying to save their asses in whatever way they can by trying to paint themselves as good, yeah, charitable but people. But they, they refuse to acknowledge that they've done something wrong. And there's, there's not, like, even a bad apology. Like, <laughs> there's nothing. <laughs> no. No, there isn't. Um, I also saw a few people who were defending them saying that this is like all of these instances are culturally normal interactions, No, which really infuriates me because I feel like sometimes you just have to sit down and think to yourself, like, are these things that I, is this environment that I grew up in, um, or a lot of the things that have been normalized, should they have been normalized? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I just feel like you have to be a little more critical of the culture and society that you grew up in right. and not just be like, this is normal because this is how it's always been. Yeah. Yeah. Just I mean, the thing- go ahead, Pixie. Yeah, I, I'm just like, my brain is exploding because it's like bringing like, okay, 50 years ago, it was normal for society to like criminal criminalize gay people. And mm-hmm. that doesn't mean it was yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> what is yeah. wrong with you? If that is what you like, yeah. justify what they're doing by like, fuck you. Excuse and I also, me. <laughs> I feel like this is an oh excuse gosh. that international fans especially use a lot with um, Asian mm-hmm. artists. And it's very, like, infantilizing the idea mm-hmm. that, oh, yeah. they don't know what's seen as wrong on a global scale because they're so isolated in their little homogenous country that they have no idea what's going on in the outside world. And, like... That's that's not the truth. Like, they know what's going on. They know their audience, you know, just because they might not understand English or every other language that international fans are speaking does not know they're not aware, does not mean they're not aware of the things that are existing in the global world. Like, it just is mm-hmm. always such a weird excuse when it's like, it's the same thing with K-pop idols. Like, oh, they're Korean. They don't know that's racist. Or they're Thai, so they don't know this is sexual assault. Like, that's such a weird excuse to make for them and why are you making an excuse for them in the first place like yeah Yeah. (laughs) I also want to I feel like I need to add that I feel like a lot of times people who defend for example Damie House will say that it's only international fans that are getting mad about Mm -hmm. stuff or it's only international Mm -hmm. fans that are causing like a controversy out of nothing but i literally found out this was happening from thai kin porsche fans and they are literally the ones who started the hashtag like Mm -hmm. (laughs) i'm like i don't know it it feels disconnected They got a novel taken off the market because it had started as a K-pop fanfic. <laughs> right. Why can yeah. they not cancel these people? Honestly. Yeah, no, okay. There, We have a lot to say on this topic. So obviously, <laughs> look forward to our entire episode rambling about <laughs> this. <laughs> we will not let it go. <laughs> So, but going into Definitely something not. that's a little more um, fun, maybe to talk about. <laughs> 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 what <laughs> what have been have been your guys' top uh, series in twenty twenty two so far? Um, hmm. Let me start. Let me look at my list because I have options and. Yeah. <laughs> Now I'm forgetting all of the titles of the shows that I watched. <laughs> um, oh, I know what, what I was going to say was my first one. Um, which actually, yeah, it was 2022 that this one came out. Um, You're My Sky. Um, yes. Yeah. Good one. And I almost forgot about it until I was like thinking before this, like trying to remember what I watched this year. And I, I mean, if you watched our previous episodes earlier this year where we talked about it, I was raving about it then. Um, I raved about it toward like after it finished. Like I just love that show. I loved the production value. I love the use of colors. I love the stories that they introduced, um, particularly like the complexities of things like the Dome and V storyline. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And I thought the craft was great despite being made up of mainly rookie actors and obviously you know we sat down and chatted with them which I think probably does influence my feelings about it because they were such a cool group of people and you know we had a lot of fun talking to them but I just like really enjoyed the show and like I don't care about sports but like I think Kayla said this before that like the drama (laughs) made them care about like basketball so and like other sports so (laughs) yeah If you're if you're that invested that you're like caring about the sports games happening in a series, I feel like, you know, it's a good one. And yeah, I just yeah. really I really enjoyed that series. It really came out of nowhere for me and mm-hmm. was definitely has definitely been one of my favorites so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kayla. 
So the first one that came to my mind was Blooming. <laughs> like 100% love Blooming so much. Mm. To me, Blooming was like the perfect series. And it's one that I felt was very real because it didn't just focus on like these two people falling in love. You also had a person who was struggling with disordered eating that's being encouraged by a mother who is like swept up in diet culture. And I just find that whole, I guess, struggle very fascinating and realistic, a little too realistic. Mm -hmm. Um, But (laughs) it also has like some of the best cinematography I've seen in a BL Mm -hmm. all year. Maybe mm-hmm. even overall, it's just so good. Um, mm-hmm. Huang Da Sol is amazing mm-hmm. at what she yeah. does. <laughs> I mm-hmm. love her so much, especially after this series. Um, but yeah, I just loved everything about it. Like the acting I thought was great. The story, cinematography. It just, I seriously can't think of a single critique that I had about it. Mm-hmm. I loved Blooming. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Yes. I'm pretty sure it's going to be having a second season or the webtoon at least is getting a second season, which something like that will also receive a second season. Well, she does have a (laughs) record of making second seasons. So (laughs) (laughs) So, um, for me, um, I'm just... It's terrible. I just need to double check that it's actually 2022. <laughs> Which is it? I don't know why I wouldn't think that it's not because it's it's not that long ago, but it feels like forever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Semantic error yeah. is like yeah. if you ask me what my favorite show is, semantic error is at the top. I just mm-hmm. think like after the like obviously blooming was very good as well. Uh, But there's been a lot of um, South Korean BLs lately that have been a disappointment. Mm. Um, Like, obviously, lower budget and all that. People were, like, coming on the scene and trying to um, make something out of the the, the rush of of, uh, BL fans. Um, So there were were a lot of low budget uh, stories and a lot of BLs that didn't make sense story wise <laughs> so I just when semantic error came out it was just like it, it was mind blowing that it was so good mm-hmm. and and they did um, the, the manual like real justice like they made changes, but they were good changes. Uh, like from uh, uh, um, Manwa to 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 uh, a live action, mm-hmm. and and the casting was perfect. Like perfect, <laughs> 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 and just the coloring and and this and like oh, seeing him in 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 the red um, tracksuit is just <laughs> is oh mm-hmm. I love it. It, no, it was just like perfect. Like that's a show that I can rewatch and rewatch, and it's still gonna be just as good. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's definitely um made an impact on the Korean just like media scene. I mean, they just won mm-hmm. a Blue Dragon yeah. Award. Um, mm-hmm. Was it was Crazy. it one of the popularity award that they won together? I think, I think so. Um, which mm-hmm. is incredible. That first of all, like a BL mm-hmm. drama was nominated, and then also one in the category and so yeah. like it's it's really made an impact in south korea so i think mm-hmm. that just speaks as a testament yeah. to how good it was yeah yep also speaking of um korean bls that weren't disappointing and Huang da liking having a track record of doing second mm-hmm. seasons <laughs> two my star two is on my yes. list yes um, yeah yeah mine too yeah. <laughs> Um, which obviously not everyone agrees with because I feel like the second season and the angst and the storyline was pretty polarizing within the BL community. Like, I feel like people were either all in for it or were like, where is my fluff kind of situation, but Mm -hmm. I loved it. I thought the story was interesting. I thought it was really, it really spoke to the nature of the two characters and really like dove into their backstories and the trauma that they have and 
the things that they needed to work on. And I just like that, um, so many second seasons, like the conflict that arises comes out of nowhere, but I feel like the conflict and the breakup and everything that happened in the second season came from their characters and the trauma that their characters have. And it was very clearly connected to their personalities and their relationship in the first season. And it was actually a second season conflict that made sense with their relationship and the characters. And I think that's one of the biggest things that like, made it an actually good second season compared mm-hmm. to what we get in a lot of BL series. Um, I'm just like Sun Hyun and Kim Kong Min have a really great chemistry together. And I yeah. feel like I would enjoy watching them in, in everything. In yeah. Anything. They um, should do yeah, more. So. Agreed. They need to do more. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be in a K-drama together. Like they both have roles in the drama, but I don't know if they'll interact. But They're not a couple. It no, doesn't. it's not a BL. It's not a BL. <laughs> If we get it doesn't crumbs count. Of their scene, if we get crumbs of them together, I feel like the That's two minds True, community but it's gonna be it like another. Bit. It's gonna be another together uh, going on to. Um, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> what's it called F4. again? F four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, F four was good, but it's not the same. <laughs> mm, yeah. Okay, Kayla. Yeah, um, with To My Star, I tend to agree that I really love the angst. I just wanted to put that out there. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Obviously. Um, I mean, this next one, we've mentioned it so many times that our listeners might be tired of it, but not me. (laughs) I have to let Um, Kayla be the one. Uh. Yeah, for all the same reasons we've mentioned before, just how real it felt and all the societal issues that it tackled, especially like police corruption, marriage equality, and even like disability rights, which is something that I don't think I've ever seen tackled mm-hmm. in a Thai drama before. Yeah. Um, and obviously, Off Gun are amazing. Like, love Off Gun. Anything they do is mm-hmm. they just put their heart and soul into everything, and mm-hmm. you can tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the rest of the cast were good too. Really loved Gawain in first. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, and just like overall, the attention to detail that was put into literally every second of the series was what made it so good. The fact that everything mm-hmm. was so intentional. It's just so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've talked about it so many times, there's nothing else to say. Not and it will always be relevant, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for me, one the next one on my list is Cutie Pie. Mm, yeah. Yes, that's on yes. my list. <laughs> <laughs> no, they did such a good job and just like first of all, they made it look so expensive. And I didn't expect that. So I was like really pleasantly yeah. surprised. And I think, like, the chemistry between C and Anu is it excellent. Gives. It gives. Oh. It is. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> and, yes, and, yes. and can we just mention um, Poppy? Poppy. Yes. Poppy. I call Oh, my Poppy. God. <laughs> the range of characters Poppy. I've seen from Poppy this year alone <laughs> is, like, from... Cutie pie to the asshole, abusive cheater and love mechanics. Like Pachi's range is so good, and I don't think crazy appreciate it enough because he's like yeah, he's seen as like a comedic actor. He's always but he like a side range. character, but mm-hmm. like, dude, mm-hmm. he is so good, and he just like gives it all in every role he has. Mm. Like, can you imagine that? The, the 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 crazy lady for from um, from from oh my god the um, what's it called again the one with Tele and <laughs> so oh, big why 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 uh, you for, I feel like you always forget the title <laughs> but it's actually it's you and I. <laughs> Like, yeah, I've seen every episode, I'm just saying. But Poppy there is amazing. And you just, like, take that character and set it 
sit at like next to Poppy's character in Cutie mm-hmm. Pie, and just like <laughs> you wouldn't guess that that's the same person mm-hmm. at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <It's> crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I Cutie Pie was amazing. They really brought it, and I'm I'm so surprised. Like because um, like Maya said, it's um, um, what the, the, the director. Uh, oh. Yeah, oh, it's his first like directing gig, mm-hmm. like alone yeah, directing right. gig, mm-hmm. and and he did such a good job. Yeah, they definitely mm-hmm. did. They spared no expenses for <laughs> this series, and honestly, like as someone who felt pretty mad about like Domundi Productions previously, mm-hmm. I feel like they weren't terrible, but like you know, we all know why are you kind of. hit hit a really bad back half why are you started out great and just like (laughs) yeah yeah so you know i didn't go into it with like i was like skeptical of demundi productions but honestly this was amazing and it makes me excited for like middleman's love i think it's called and bed friends as much as i hate that title oh yeah I hate um, that but title. <laughs> oh. it makes me excited for the, those productions as well because it seems like they're really stepping it up to Monday and of mm-hmm. Tiana really stepping it up with like their mm-hmm. productions and putting out mm-hmm. good content so mm-hmm. and cutie pie was the first step in that so yeah yeah definitely Alexa okay. um my third one um was one I feel like not many people really watched but I um, was very, very, very into Dear Doctor. I'm uh, coming for so Love because, Dear Doctor. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's definitely, like, not the most romantic series out there. Like, the romance was definitely not a side plot, but more mm-hmm. minimal compared to the overall feelings and story that the show was trying to tell. Um, I feel like it's one of those shows where kind of each episode or every couple episodes kind of focuses on like a different patient and there's a different lesson coming out of it type thing. And the, the leads learn, you know, something different from each patient that they work with. And I, I'm a sucker for first dramas like that. I always love that kind of stuff. Um, but I just thought, I just thought it was really, really beautiful. Um, I love mm-hmm. the message of the story and I loved what they were trying to tell about embracing your life and you know you don't get a second chance most of the time so you know you know make the most of what you can and and be good to people and and you know that kind of message that they put into it and you know even though the romance wasn't the hugest part of the show I think that it was really good and obviously Nut and Karn um have a friendship and have worked together in the past so it was really cool to be able to see them come back on screen together and I know that they were really excited about being able to be in a show together again and yeah I just really loved it I another one where like I wasn't sure what to expect because um Wabi Sabi stuff has been hit and ma- hit and miss lately as well but <laughs> I definitely think that's yeah. a gem and you know I would say don't be super off put by the premise and, and give it a shot because I, I thought it was a really beautiful story mm-hmm yeah Agree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you um, Okay. <laughs> so my next one is Kin Porsche. Mm-hmm. Because although the series is very flawed and I have a laundry list of critiques about it, it has still somehow managed to completely take over my year. Mm -hmm. To the point where I forgot what other series came out this year. (laughs) Like, I just, there's so much about it that I love. Like, I love a good mafia story. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, one of my favorite movies growing up was Goodfellas. So Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff is, like, right up my alley. Um, I think the cast are amazing. I love them so much. I think their interaction like on and off screen are really fun to just follow along with. Mm. Uh, And I think they made the series as good as it was because there were a lot of um, critiques with like the writing and pacing that I had, but I kept watching because of them because I liked them Mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. And I even, even with the writing, I kind of like how messy it was. (laughs) It was kind of like watching a reality show. (laughs) 
<laughs> like yeah, there was some <laughs> there was some underlying trashiness to it, but I loved it <laughs> so yeah. much. And of course, like all the things, like it's so beautifully shot, the color mm-hmm. grading, even things as small as like being able to see like the imperfections and like facial hair on people. Mm-hmm. Something as small as yeah. that makes it seem so much more realer and rawer than a lot mm-hmm. of BLs that are super, super airbrushed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed. So, yeah. I feel like I could go on and on <laughs> about like all the little things I loved about the series. But overall, I just feel like the story really kept me interested and the cast as well. Yeah. I really love them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so my um, last for the list, I, like, can't technically it's not a BL, like, if technically, but um, I I wanted to to we've talked about it before. It's Heartstopper, mm-hmm. like, technically it's not mm-hmm. a BL, but it's technically, it's, but. It's so good that it deserves. For the purposes like, of this episode, it needs to be mentioned. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it crosses I mean, the boundaries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's like, but it does cross some. Like there are BL elements to it, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but it's it's such 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 a youthful story that it still like it can retain retain some BL elements to it, but still be plausible real um like queer media media is yeah like mm-hmm. a little bit of fantasy a little bit of realness like yeah i my heartstopper was amazing and i never thought that i would care so much about teenagers yeah <laughs> right <laughs> the is real <laughs> I'm it still is <laughs> years, i'm 33 years old i never thought i would be so invested in a show about <laughs> teenagers. <laughs> yeah. But the representation and just the thought that went into it and and like oh, just the colors and all the like metaphors, like everything was so well thought. Like and it was obvious that like the whole show was made with passion and mm. and with a lot exactly. of people that really cares about it it wasn't a money project yeah. right mm-hmm. yeah mm. yeah it's a solid, yes. solid way to end it <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say like like for a wrap up the three big Thai shows um so far this year has been kin porsche cutie pie and not me yeah oh absolutely yeah probably I mean, those are indisputable as like mm-hmm. the shows the shows so far this year um mm-hmm. for sure and i feel like like yeah i i i especially with like kim portion stuff i feel um when you love a show um you're gonna have more critiques for it because mm-hmm. you're paying more attention that's true if i yeah if i didn't like it i wouldn't be paying attention so i wouldn't know <laughs> that's so what true the problems were, right so mm-hmm. just the, the whole point that you have critiques and you're willing to sit down and go through them show that you actually like it and you're really invested. love it yeah yes yes Very true. Yeah. so anyone mad about like us criticizing anything we do it out of love like <laughs> It's just from the heart. Very true. Mm-hmm. Very true. I was not watching each episode multiple times a week for no reason. Yeah, yeah for real. Exactly. Exactly. The analysis. So, on the contrary, is there a show you're looking forward to that ended up disappointing you in any way? Um, for me, uh, that's my candy. Um, I was really excited oh, yeah. because mm. it was Kim on mm. Copter and yeah. I, you know, it was a show where they were going to be playing an established couple. Yeah. Um, I kind of love shows like that because I feel like it brings mm. out a, a different set of conflicts and things like that. But I don't, I don't think I made it past the second episode. It, I did. Just, I couldn't do half the first episode. It, I'm just like, what just is like, this? <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. I felt like it was trying to be like. <laughs> 
a why 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 type thing but yeah why, exactly why, why yeah was very self-aware yeah I feel like right? this was not self-aware <laughs> like it, it had like the same like comedic elements that why 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 had but like it just didn't hit and yeah. I don't know there's I just like I tried so hard and I really wanted to like it yeah I, I wanted I'm to so excited to see Kim on a copter and like mm. I remember first learning about it like sometime last year and just being so hyped that they were you know gonna have another series outside of mm-hmm. Gen Y because that is also that's Gen Y <laughs> um but yeah it just it was not it for me mm-hmm. Kayla yeah um surprisingly I feel like there weren't really any shows I watched that I was flat out disappointed with because there is like there are so many options now that I really only watch stuff that I know I'm gonna like (laughs) um (laughs) but I think the closest thing for me was unfortunately Holland's BL Ocean Likes Me I thought it was Mm -hmm. cute um, and it, like, served its purpose as just, like, this short, cute drama. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I, I expected more from it. And I don't even know it exactly what shallow. I expected. It was a yeah. little shallow. Yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like we never really get a larger glimpse into Holland's character than we should. Mm-hmm. Like, they mm-hmm. sprung... I feel like they sprung the whole musician thing on us way <laughs> too late in the series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like they made it, they made it so mysterious where he came from that I remember at the beginning people were thinking it was like a mermaid type situation. <laughs> <You're not laughs> like, serious, yeah. <laughs> and I thought that too. I was like, is this, is this about to be yeah. like a mermaid BL? Fantasy, <laughs> but no. No, yeah, I mean, he's just if, a mis- if, mysterious person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was no reason to keep him as a mysterious person at all. Like, the, it didn't do anything Literally. for the plot. Like, there yeah. was no, like, huge reveal. Oh, my God. Like, he's <laughs> a musician. What are you talking about? <laughs> Which, if you think about it, is very obvious because all of it is a mis- musician. <laughs> he's going to play a musician. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah. there were so many parts where it really felt like they were pushing towards some fantasy theme because mm-hmm. they had such an emphasis on him coming from the water or like mm-hmm. going towards the water. And I was like, mm-hmm. this, I feel like the ocean almost had no effect on mm-hmm. <laughs> the story yeah. whatsoever. For, for a drama called Ocean Likes Me. I was like, well, wait, they were, it's just because they were by the beach, I guess. But yeah. like, you know, I would have thought exactly. it would have more relevant yeah and i mean the other like main character just to me felt like like he was just standing around being confused all the time like there was no personality in the true (laughs) he was like a himbo (laughs) yeah literally like the one emotion we got when when he was got so mad because the the, the spilled um soy sauce was like i don't know yeah Uh, something like that (laughs) yeah yeah. i get where you're coming from for for me the most like disappointing one like the only one i can actually like put my finger on is uh paint with love because I was oh, so God. excited about Tinto. I forgot I was that was this so year. so <laughs> excited. Yeah, I had to check. <laughs> I oh. was so excited. And it just like, it just fell flat on his ass. I mean. Yeah. I, I can still pick out things that I liked about it. Mm-hmm. But the writing and the characterization the was so bad. <laughs> And like you just can't deny it. You just can't. Mm. <laughs> I felt bad for so Singto and potential. Tay. <laughs> it had so much potential because it's it's actually like plot wise, it's not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. But the, just like the the follow through was just terrible. Not if you've there. given that plot to <laughs> yeah. a proper writer that could do something <laughs> with it, then it would have been good, probably. Could have been a hit. Yeah, could have been. Yeah. Should have given it to Maya. <laughs> <laughs> Maya. Maya employee could have done it. Maya and I are Easily. the only one we trust with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Jamie. Jamie too. Jamie has True. done a great job with um 
My secret love. My secret love. I yeah, keep wanting sure. to call it secret admirer, yeah, but <laughs> we don't use that. Uh. No. <laughs> uh-uh. Okay. Has uh, there been an overall highlight in BL for you so far this year? I have. I just need to <laughs> get it off my chest. Go ahead. <laughs> It's gonna sound a little weird. <laughs> Which, Do share. To be fair, most of the stuff that I say sounds weird. <laughs> But you know, into my start too. When they're on the like ground, they they've been looking for the girl and the 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 the, the kiss and and the liquid blood, blood yeah. and and just like the whole <laughs> setting there. It's just like it's it's impaled into my mind. <laughs> Impaled. <laughs> <laughs> it's stuck in there. It's not coming out. Like I, I, I close my eyes and I can see that scene. I'm just, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I knew the second you said two yeah. stars. That's what she's gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it in the review too. So yeah, we did. I was like, I know that's what I'm about. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, I think for me, this literally just happened, and it's not a scene from a show, but um, the Kim Porsche concert, Perth doing the fucking Sailor Sailor Perth yes. the costume <laughs> and the wig, and I was like, Perth would be the one where all of these dudes are like out here grinding on the floor, although he did do some of that as well, but like wearing bondage gear and stuff. Perth would have a fucking Sailor Moon costume on and dance around with a little ribbon. Like, it was just, like, the most Perth thing ever. And I thought it was a cute tie-in because he also dressed up as Sailor Moon at, like, the end-of-year party. I think it was that, um, her, it was, like, Christmas or end-of-year party that Beyond Cloud had where they all came in costumes and he came as, um... The sailor, sailor Perth, is what the the fans like to call him. But I just thought that was so. It, I woke up and saw the clips from like the first day, and I was like, "Oh, fucking course, that was what Perth did for his little his little number that he had." It was so great. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, in terms of like a specific highlight. Uh, I thought that Z and Nunu's little fan con they had a while ago was really fun. Uh, the highlight for me was whenever they danced to G by Girls' Generation. Yes. I thought it was so cute. Like, a lot of that stuff ends up being cringy, but the fact that it was so, like, hyper cute and, like, they were really playing it up, I think, made it genuinely entertaining like I loved it so much um I also have an honorable mention for a series I think more people should watch something in my room because yes. it was amazing <laughs> and it's I that's another one on my list <laughs> where like the cinematography is so good in it but a lot of people don't even know because they didn't check it out like <laughs> yeah it's so well say- filmed They they kind of bit themselves in the ass with it because they did. It was like the first BL that was available on Channel Three Plus, which like I literally went and like paid for a year subscription because it was only like two dollars for Channel Three Plus, so I could watch that BL. But then like they turned around and they also did an upload on YouTube, but they cut a lot of crucial information, like crucial scenes, yeah, out of the YouTube upload. So like people were getting these like botched edited like missing a lot of important points versions that they are watching the free youtube version and so like mm-hmm. i think the the story didn't come across as well for a lot of the people who are watching it that understandably did not yeah. want to join the channel plus vip like so it kind of sucks but oh my god i love that show I yeah i remember it because it's a ghost <laughs> meal, but <laughs> uh it's yeah it's pretty sad but I don't know. It's really good. I noticed with the YouTube um, version that they're like 30 to 40 minutes long. And I was like, yeah. what the hell? And Because the every episode was, like, was over an hour. Minutes. Like yeah. <laughs> literally movie It length episodes. So much. <sighs> yeah. I will advocate for that show. Me too. Mm-hmm. Nut was really good in it too. Like he was so good. Yeah, I feel like he redeemed real. himself. 
after oxygen. I was like, people need to give it a chance so they can see the range. Listen, I know where you're coming from, guys, but <laughs> like, you're like, it's not gonna happen. Ah, yeah, the freaking ghost stuff. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ghosts. <laughs> yeah, ghosts. Ghosts. <laughs> No, but yeah, I I do actually, I did watch some of it, and I do actually agree with you guys. I just, I couldn't finish it. It's fair. And I know, I I did check, (laughs) I did check how it ended. I did do that. I just, you guys know how I am with ghost stories. It's just. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And it's like the, the emphasis on the ghost thing, like that's the whole story. It's not even like until we meet again, where it's just part of it. It's yeah. the main thing <laughs> throughout the so story. You don't like ghosts? Not the drama for you, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think like one of the things that had me like screaming too um, was that uh, when the I saw the announcement that they are starting to film Between Us. Yeah. Yesterday yes! was their Q one. So excited. Yesterday was their Q one. It's yes. finally happening. I am so excited. And the fact <laughs> that they waited until now, I actually take as a really positive thing that they waited Me too. to make sure the author is healthy and could write yeah. this properly and they didn't rush it. And it's just I'm so excited. Yes, it's fine. I'm really excited. Happening. Bone prime, yeah, I I seeing like the worship ceremony and like they did the character fitting and I was really excited because Fluke was at the character fitting so yeah. I feel like um, <laughs> Parm is at least going to have like a support role in the drama so I'm hoping mm-hmm. that like Om will make a cameo so we can get like a tiny little Dean Parm moment if we're lucky but yeah I've just been like the more stuff that's been happening these past couple weeks is just like, my excitement level is like through the roof for that right now yeah. I mean, oh, they yeah. can't, like, have Between Us without Parm and Dean. Like, they yeah. are friends with the main characters. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, if, like, for Ohm, um, I think his biggest issue is his schedule because he's he films, mm-hmm. like, multiple mm-hmm. dramas at a time. So I think, you know, they new director New talked about it and was like, they're both want to be involved it's just like a matter mm-hmm. of how much they can both be involved and it seems yeah. like fluke will probably appear in it a little more than Ohm will but mm-hmm. i think Ohm will at least have like a cameo or two which i can live yeah. with that yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah but that makes sense like the uh, until we made again was um seen sort of from um farms point of view mm-hmm. and now it yeah. will probably yeah. be from um teams point teams point of yeah. view so you'll yeah. see more of farm since yeah. they're the friends yeah mm-hmm. that makes sense yeah but i haven't actually read um the novel she's released the chapters i think i think no it clue. is like <laughs> I think from what I saw, some people were talking about it in the server. There's not an official English version, but there's like mm. a like a fan translation that the author mm. has like okay basically until yeah. she can get a, a official trip proper. Out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. I know. Last time because I read until like chapter eight or something, and then the author had the break. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's more after that, but I don't. I'm not sure if they've translated everything. But yeah. yeah, yes, that's gonna be awesome. I, I um, hope. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like my my expectations are sky high. <laughs> Dude. Mine too. <laughs> like the only way. Oh, oh my god, it's gonna crash and burn. No, okay, no, no, no. no. Manifest, happy thoughts. Manifest, happy it's thoughts. gonna be amazing. <laughs> We love it. It's gonna be perfect. It is amazing. It is the best yeah. series. Well, no matter if it's good or bad, at least we'll have something to talk about. True. 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 <laughs> so to wrap it up, what are we currently watching? A lot. <laughs> um <laughs> For me, what what am I watching? Love Mechanics, My Secret Love, mm. Vice Versa, which are all airing on Saturday. 
Um, <laughs> oh, my sunshine night slash love at nine. And then I watched mm-hmm. the first episode of Coffee Melody and I liked it. I just haven't, <clears throat> excuse me, There's gotten so to episode much. two yet, but I mm-hmm. plan to continue it. So a lot. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I I'm behind on like every BL <laughs> because I kind of took a um a K drama detour, uh, but I am always up to date on Oh My Sunshine Night, um, and it's very dramatic so far. It's like not what I expected, but mm-hmm. I don't hate it. It's very yeah. telenovela <laughs> level I... dramatic. I surprisingly I'm like this rarely happens to me but like right now I'm more invested in um Pan and Nose characters than I am in Oh Fuchs characters. I think I am um, too. So which like I did not expect because obviously I love Oh Fluke but like Pan and Nose the storyline that they have going on and like the angst and the power dynamics it's mm-hmm. it's good stuff. Pan yeah. has just like made us all <laughs> We always have to mention him in, like, every recording. <laughs> and then it'll be a highlight clip. Just so Alexa can flirt some more on Instagram. <laughs> Listen. I gotta do what I gotta do. Yeah, I mean, like, I forgot how you flirt, so it's good that someone else is doing it. I don't know. I don't know that shit. <laughs> But yeah, I'm watching the same things. I'm a little bit behind on some of them, but catching up uh, once I have the time. And I'm also watching Even Sun. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of mixed things about that one, but it has Mm -hmm. boom prime, bound prime. Like, it's not like, it's not, it's not like amazing, (laughs) but it's it's interesting (laughs) enough to keep watching right now, I think. Like, I, I, I love watching them on the screen, and it, the story is okay, and the filming is okay, <laughs> and it's, like, it's not so bad that I have to stop watching. It's a nice little precursor well, that's good. to keep you, keep you tied <laughs> yeah. over until between us. Yeah. I feel like and that's their basically yeah. what it is. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. the chemistry they have is great, no matter what, so, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So that's all for this week. (laughs) What have been your highlights of BL in 2022? Drop a comment down below and send us a message on our social media. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate, review, and follow us uh, wherever you get your podcasts. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Sharing this episode with your friends really helps us out. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode and see you next week. Bye. It's more easy for me to remember the shows that I hate than the ones yeah. that I love. <laughs> <laughs> I get so triggered. <laughs>